The Indians hold over second place in the AL Central. Got a little tighter last night as the White Sox scored seven runs in the seventh and eighth innings to creep within a half game of the Tribe. Tonight, the Indians need a win to remain in second, and Jenmar Gomez may be the right man for the job. So let's get down and boogie as he seeks his fifth straight win next on Sports Time Ohio. From Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, the Indians continue the final homestand of the year as they wrap up a four-game series tonight against the Chicago White Sox. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. So far, Chicago's had the better of the Tribe in this series, but why not? They've had the better of it all season long against Cleveland. They've won two out of three so far. They split the doubleheader in the first day of this series, and then Chicago beat them up last night late. But offensively right now for the Indians, the suddenly surging Travis Hafner is a sight for sore eyes. Well, Hafner uh, homered in the first game on Tuesday's doubleheader, and he comes last night off the veteran Mark Burley. He knew he got that one. That was high. That was deep to right field. So two homers in the si uh, in the series. He hasn't homered that many times in a long time. You can see 30 games. He had two home runs prior to that. So he's swinging a bat much better. Had a couple of good at-bats in, in the middle part of that line if you want to see him to continue to drive in runs. All right, and as we take a look at our pitching matchup tonight, you've got a guy who's making his first career start at Progressive Field in Philip Umber for Chicago, and Jenmar Gomez is trying to stay on a hot roll for the Tribe. Our pitching matchup brought to you by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. For Umber, 9-8 and eight on the year. His last start uh, against the Indians in Chicago, a good one. Six innings, two earned runs. That was on a Saturday Fox game. But he'll be matched up against Jenmar Gomez, who has been probably the best Indians pitcher in his last four starts. He is 4-0, and oh, and he's had a good slider. He's been pitching very well. We'll see if he matches up good tonight against the White Sox. As the Tribe tries to split this four-game series against Chicago and stay ahead of them for second place in the American League Central. We're back with the starting lineups, first pitch, and all the play-by-play -play action coming up on Sports Time Ohio. Welcome in to Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland as the Indians and White Sox put the wraps on a four-game series here tonight. Indians trying to earn a split in the four-game set as they send Jenmar Gomez to the mound. Before tonight's ball game, the lineup cards were exchanged at home plate and a special twist tonight as Omar Vizquel and Jim Tomey represented their clubs at home plate. Who knows, this may be the final time these two guys are on the field together in uniform. As active players, although as Ozzie Guillen said, the White Sox manager, hey, I think they could both play another year. If somebody wants to give them a flyer, I think both of these guys would be willing to come back. Omar told us he'd like to play another year. Jim Tomey at this point says he hasn't really made up his mind about what's going to happen for him next season. Boy, but when you look at the numbers between these two guys, uh, very, very impressive. Over 20 years in the big leagues, 
the number of games they have played, hits, I mean, doubles, and they had a breakdown today. It was uh, very impressive. Those two combined for six division titles and two league championships as teammates for the Cleveland Indians. Jenmar Gomez finishing his warm-up tosses. Ozzie Guillen's starting lineup tonight looks like this. Juan Pierre leading it off in left field. Then Alexi Ramirez followed by A.J. Pruszynski. Alex Rios, Adam Dunn, Diane Vicieto in the middle. Alejandro Diaz, Brent Morrell, and Gordon Beckham round it out. Denmar Gomez on the mound making start number nine for the Indians this year. He has been on a roll. He's won his last four starts. He has a 378 earned run average. In those four starts, he beat Oakland, Kansas City, the Chicago White Sox, and Minnesota. And that uh, start against the White Sox, his only start against them in his career. So he's going to come back and uh, pitch against the lineup. He made two starts ago. We'll see if Gomez can get it and even this series at four. And we are ready to go on a beautiful fall evening here in downtown Cleveland. Jenmar Gomez to face Juan Pierre to start things off. And a fastball strike over the outside corner. Sixty-eight degrees our game time temperature tonight. Up high, one ball, one strike. Juan Pierre, one for eight in the series. Sends a fly ball to left. Ezekiel Carrera there to grab it, one away. Let's take a look at that Indians defense brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, saluting the men and women defending our country and watching on the Armed Forces Network. That was Carrera and left making that play. Sizemore in center. Fukudome is in right. Hanahan is at third. Cabrera back at short. That's good news. Kipnis is at second. Laporte at first. Santana behind the plate. Alexei Ramirez jumps on the first pitch and pulls it foul. Bill Welke calling the balls and strikes. Jeff Nelson at first. Tim Cheetah at second. Marty Foster down at third. Now the 0-1. Hit in the air to right center. Fukudome flags it down two away. Rick, I don't think it's any coincidence that Jenmar Gomez has had a lot of success because he's thrown a lot of strikes. And as you look at our Ion 4 Powerade rankings, his four wins tied for the most in the league since August 30th. Uh, three of those wins, which you like, coming against the American League Central. Three straight wins is uh, Minnesota, Chicago, and Kansas City. So you got to like that. But you, you're right. He's not an overpowering guy. He, he's a pitch to contact guy. Yeah, when you're a pitcher like that, you can't afford to allow extra base runners because you're going to give up some hits. Which is okay. I mean, you, you as long as you don't walk people, you stay aggressive, make them hit their way on. Berzinski a swing and a miss, and the count evens at one and one. And he will get more comfortable and throwing different pitches in different situations like that change up right there in a 1-0 count guys looking for the fastball just missed with that fastball and it's two and one big chopper Kipnis on the big hop throws him out and the White Sox go one, two, three. Indians coming to bat when we come back.
Starting lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Kosuke Fukudome, Jason Kipnis, and as Dribble Cabrera. Cabrera back in the lineup here tonight. Hafner, Santana, Sizemore in the middle of Porta, Hanahan, and Carrera rounded out. 28-year-old Philip Umber makes his 27th start. He is 9-8, and eight, a 359 earned run average. Got off to a very good start in the first half. He was 8-5 and five with a 310. He's just 1-3 in the second half and a 481 ERA. Pitched a good game the last time he pitched against the Indians. It was a no decision, but he went for six innings, seven hits, and just two runs in that ball game. Start before that, he had to leave the ball game. Only pitched an inning and a third. Ball went off his forehead. And this was the guy that hit it. Yeah, that was a really scary sight when we were in Chicago. Fukutome blasts one. Deep right center. Diazza back. He's out of room. It's out of here. Fukudome's fifth home run as an Indian. Gives the Tribe a 1-0 lead. Boy, that a way to start the game out, huh? You get a ball to your liking, and you hit it a ton for Fukudome, his fifth home run. Let's take a look at that home run replay brought to you by Great Clips. Fastball middle in. Great needs, great deeds, great clips. This ball hit to right center field, had the carry into the seats. Tribe leads at one to nothing on the first hitter of the bottom half of the first inning. Jason Kipnis, three for eight in the series with a couple of doubles. Swing and a miss. Tommy Bo Shenick telling us that that's just the second leadoff homer for the Indians this year. Grady Sizemore had the other back on May 10th. One ball, two strikes for Kipnis. And he golfs one high in the air to deep center. Back goes Rio. Still going back in. It is gone. Just did clear the fence. And Kipnis with a solo home run. Number seven on the year for the Indian second baseman. And the tribe out of the gates with back-to-back -back homers in the first. Boy, these guys have got their hitting shoes on tonight. Jason Kipnis. He goes to straightaway center field. It's going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Picked on a little slider. Down, in, used the big part of the ballpark. And, I mean, he stayed behind that ball well. Had enough carry. Just gets over the glove of Rios in center field. Out near the tribe bullpen. First time the Indians have started the game with back-to-back -back homers since 2007 when Grady Sizemore and Casey Blake did it against Kansas City. Now is Drupal Cabrera. One-one pitch down and in. Boy, that's uh, that'll wake you up if you're the starting pitcher. You get a fastball, middle in. They turn on it, a little slider down and in. He goes to center field. You're saying, boy, I better start locating now. Philip Humber's first career start at Progressive Field, and it's off to a rocky beginning. He retires Cabrera for out number one. Our great clip of the game from yesterday comes courtesy of Travis Hafner, who is starting to heat things up right now offensively. His second home run in the series. Relax, you're at great clips. I mean, you mentioned in the open he had, what, two homers in his previous 30, 30 games? 30 games, right. Now they have 22 more home runs this year than they had all of last year. The 1 0 pitch to Hafner fouled back out of play. 
Mike Hargrove, who was with us the last couple of nights when he talked about Jason Kipnis, you know, he said he's not a guy that you look at as a home run hitter, but a good hitter who will definitely hit some home runs. Well, there's no question. He, I mean, he stays behind the ball very well. That's enabled him to hit that slider. Hafner puts one into the gap, and closing on it is Alex Rios for out number two. Let's take a look at the Home Depot White Sox defense this evening. It's Pierre in left, Rios in center, Diaz in right. Morell at third, Ramirez at short, Beckham at second, Viciato at first, Pierzynski behind the plate. More savings, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Now Carlos Santana steps in. And Philip Umber misses low for ball one. One ball, one strike. Santana two for ten in the series. Takes on the outside corner for a strike. Carlos Santana, 26 homers on the year. 13 have come at home, 13 on the road. That's hit high in the air to center. Rios will make the catch. Back to back homers to start the game for the Indians. Fukudome, then Kipnis, and it's 2 0 Cleveland. Pineapple Real Fruit Smoothie has arrived by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers and by AT&T. Second inning, 2-0 Cleveland. Alex Rios will lead off for Chicago. Pitch outside for ball one. Rip foul. Right into the end of the Indians dugout. Looks like it's going for Igor again. Down there. <laughs> they like that that hairdo. They're going down to get him. Low and away, two balls and a strike.
Good breaking ball in for a strike two and two. Adam Dunn waits on deck. Trying to keep the ball away from Rios. Full count. Popped him up on the infield. There's Dribble Cabrera. The shortstop will take care of it. And there's one out. Injury report brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for sin serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Well, around the major leagues, Phil Hughes actually got some uh, good news. They, uh, they checked him out, did an MRI, and they found that it was just inflammation in his back. They weren't sure what was wrong. They thought it might have been a much more serious problem, and that's key because the Yankees have some pitching question marks yes. as they get ready for the postseason now. They need all the help they can get. You're right in the pitching uh, department. Three on the right side of the infield for the Indians here as Adam Dunn steps in. Two for nine in the series. Both of those hits opposite field doubles. Up high with the two strike pitch. Done four for his last 14. At the plate, fouls that off the facing of that White Sox dugout, almost took out one of his teammates, and it was Gordon Beckham who just did get out of the way. You know, it wasn't that long ago that, you know, they, they just put that netting up in front of a lot of the dugouts. Uh -huh. They used to be open. But that's where everybody stands and watches the ball game from their perch. Swung on and missed. Dunn strikes out the 168th time he's gone down on strikes. Two down. Take a look at our trivia question tonight brought to you by AT&T. Which pitcher holds the Indians record for most seasons with 20 or more wins? We'll have the answer coming up later in the game. Slow chopper. Hanahan, bare hand grab and throw and he got him. Boy, he hasn't played a whole lot lately. And it doesn't show. He came up with a terrific bare hand play, and the Sox go one, two, three.
right there. And he likes what he's seeing so far. Back to back homers to start. He for the likes Indians. what he's eating. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's good. Grady Sizemore leading off here in the second inning. Then Matt Laporta and Jack Hanahan do up. You know, the two home runs in the first inning for the Indians give, uh, give them 23 homers in the first inning this year where they've out homered their opposition 23 to 8. That's the most in any inning they've had this year. The fifth is the second most at 22. Two balls and a strike. Well, basically what that tells you is they take advantage of a lot of early mistakes. They don't let them get away with well, That's a good thing. Weekly rolled to second base. Gordon Beckham will flip it over. And there's one out here in inning number two. Our minor league report brought to you by Kia. Juan Diaz this year at 255. Nine homers, 60 runs batted in. He came from Seattle. The big, tall, rangy shortstop. Offense, obviously, is the, is the question mark for Juan Diaz. Will he continue to progress? Will he hit enough to one day become a major league shortstop? Boy, that's a question. That's you know, For a lot of guys. Yeah, isn't for all the kids that come down. Will they be able to hit? Matt Laporta, one for four with a double in the series. And a bouncer towards third. Morell, the long throw, and he takes care of Laporta, two down. Well, as Jack Hanahan makes his way to home plate, let's check in for the first time tonight with Katie with him. Well, Matt, tonight is Hanahan's second game back after being out 10 days with that left calf strain. He told me it's been a bit of a mental adjustment because he was so hot offensively at the plate before getting injured. He said the key to getting his timing back, really just slowing the game down, not trying to do too much when he's up there, and sticking with that short, quick swing. Well, it certainly didn't affect his defense, the 10-day layoff. Made a terrific bare hand grab and throw. Well, that's that's the, the thing. When you're in a groove and you're feeling great, you're seeing the ball great, boy, you certainly don't want to miss any time whatsoever. No. You can't wait to come to the ballpark. When the game's over, you want to stay right there and start the next game. But, you know, you try and pick it up as much as you can. And when, when she says slow the game down, that's the you try and do it every day. Just some days awfully difficult to do. Well, that might have been the real key to his offensive resurgence. Remember, he told us he going, went to the heavier bat. And right. going to the heavier bat probably helped him slow the swing right. down. Right, where you don't try and do too much as long as you, you make your hands work. And you, you, he wasn't tired. Reached for it, and Ramirez will throw him out. Tribe goes 1-2-3. Two, they lead it 2 nothing after two innings of play.
remind you to stay tuned later in the game to see our Miller Taste Greatness moment. Two nothing tribe. Bottom third of the White Sox order due here. Alejandro Diaz, Brent Morrell, and Gordon Beckham. And leading off is the man who Ozzie Guillen says right now has been the White Sox best overall player. And, you know, the nice thing about Diaz for a manager is he can do a little bit of everything. He can play the outfield, he can come in and play first base. Well, he had the big hit in last night's ball game in the seventh inning. Two out, uh, two run single. Hits this one to center field where Grady Sizemore makes the play. One down. Well, you don't want to miss the fireworks show, and it's the last one of the year. Saturday night, the Indians will host the Minnesota Twins. It's a day-night doubleheader, so you want to get down here early. It's fun day. We'll be out on the plaza. Stick around, and it's a Star Wars-themed fireworks show. To wrap it up this year, get your tickets at Indians.com. Last one of the year, Saturday night, Minnesota Twins in town. Brent Morrell has hit seven home runs in the month of September. Yeah. Seven homers, 17 ribbies. And when you do that, it gets everybody talking. And Ozzie Ginn was asked about Morrell and in terms of is he does he see him becoming a Joe Creedy type player? And Ozzie quickly said, whoa, 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 whoa. Joe Creedy was a home run hitter. He said he had freakish power. He said, I think Morrell will be a better overall hitter, but I don't think he's got Joe Creedy kind of power that he's going to hit that many. Uh, Creedy averaged 28 home runs a year when he played for the White yeah. Sox. Well, look, they're just looking for a guy. He can play third base, you know, defensively. They will look. They need some pop. The, at a corner position, you like to see a few home runs. They expected this kid to do that this year. But, you know, everybody, when you hit a few home runs, everybody thinks 20, 30. You know, you think the big picture. But you got to let a guy mature. And this is a guy that's had a hard time. You know, he feels for the ball on the outside part of the plate, trying to hit it the other way like most hitters do, instead of going up there and being aggressive and, and swinging the bat and hitting the ball. Home runs will come with good, uh, good at-bats. He's got a little pop in his bat. But I think they expected a little more this year out of him. Getting the opportunity to play third base. I mean, and they had Mark T in. Hit two home runs in the first five months. Yeah, right. So and, do, do you get excited because he hit seven in September? Uh, that's, right. That's what they expected him, not seven in th every month. But, right. I mean, they expected him to do a little bit more than what he has done this year. Takes the walk here. And that's the first base runner for Chicago tonight. Brings up Gordon Beckham. Beckham three for six in the series. All three of the hits doubles. And all three in the same game. Yeah. Out of play. Gordon Beckham hasn't had the kind of frustrating season that, say, an Adam Dunn has had for the White Sox, but nonetheless, they expected, he expected, uh, a better season offensively than what he has produced. I always felt that these guys, the, uh, the White Sox being these guys, felt Beckham was going to be a, you know, a top two hitter, you know, two up in the top of the order as opposed to being down there in the number nine hole. Well, when he had the three hits, the three doubles, he said that's the that's the kind of night I've been searching for. The, you know, and not that he hit three doubles, but the kind of swings and the kind of at bats he had. But he said it just hasn't happened this year for him. He gets knocked down by that pitch.
two balls and two strikes. Oh, it hit Gomez, Karam's to third, Hanahan goes to second, and they got him. Tim Cheetah punching out Brent Morell on the force at second. It was a bang-bang play, and give Hanahan a lot of credit for making the heads-up throw no off the Karam. No question about it. Look at that. He was right up, and he knew right what he was going to do with that ball when he got it. And, you know, you almost, if you're Beckham, say, my goodness, you wanted to get that guy down there. It would have been a base hit, but he, he was out. A little tardy getting down there. I'm not sure if Morrell picked it up and he saw everything in front of him. I'm sure he did if he was watching. That was a good play by Hanahan. Juan Pierre flied to left his first time up. Inside for ball one. One and one to count. Good change up from Gomez. It's amazing how many times you do see that, though. A hard hit ball back at the pitcher, and he just sticks an appendage out, whether it's a, a glove or a foot, a leg, and it carries right to another infielder. Now that's when you're going bad. As a hitter? <laughs> yeah. You know, normally when you're going good, you're getting the breaks, the baseball gods are with you, however you want to look at it. It usually hits there and it deflects away and nobody gets to it. Okay, infield single. But boy, when it's not going your way, seems to deflect to a defender. They get an out, and you're more frustrated than you were bef before you started because you see that ball going up the middle as a base hit. Well, that one did get up the middle and into center field. And Beckham stops at second. That's the first hit of the game for Chicago. And it comes with two outs here in the third. Keeps the inning alive now for Alexi Ramirez. Well, that one upstairs, out over the plate, and Pierre, easy for him to just go right back up the middle with that pitch. So the Sox keep it going with two outs, first and second. Bring up Ramirez and give him a chance. Fly it out to right his first time up. And Gomez in with a strike. One on one the count. Earlier today, the Minnesota Twins snapped an 11 game losing streak. They beat Seattle three to two. That's their 60th win against 95 losses on the season. You could very easily have two teams with 100 losses this year in Major League Baseball. The Astros already with 102. And Minnesota, five more losses would put them at the century mark. Talk about a frustrating day, though, if you're Seattle. In that game, they had 13 hits and managed just two runs. Gomez breaks the bat of Alexi Ramirez, gets out of the inning, stranding a pair. We go to the bottom of the third, 2-0 Cleveland.
back-to-back homers in the first. Since then, Philip Umber has retired six in a row. Ezekiel Carrera will lead off for the Indians here in the home half of the third. And he bounces it foul at the first base line. Looks like Umber's starting to get a feel for that breaking ball in his off-speed pitches. Starting to locate. First inning, he had a problem. They took advantage of it. He's starting to settle in. That's blooped to left, but Pierre playing shallow, able to grab it, one away. Check in once again right now with Katie with him. Well, guys, we are going to be making Ohio history as well as progressive field history on Sunday, January 15th, when we have the first ever outdoor college hockey game. The Ohio State Buckeyes taking on the Michigan Wolverines right here. Puck drops at 5.05. And right now, you can go online to Indians.com backslash snow days and register for your chance to purchase tickets before everyone else. Check it out, guys. Thanks, Katie. It was also announced today that uh, Rick Manning is going to be uh, manning the Zamboni for uh, uh, well, snow days I will. This year. Yes, I am. I will be coming back in here from Thanksgiving on. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I have to go take some classes when the year is over on how to drive it. They got a cot set up for you. You can sleep right here at the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> One and two, the count on Kosuke Fukudome, who started this game with a blast to right center field. And he got him to go chase that time. First strikeout for Umber, two down here in the third. Now the Indians started with Fukudome and then Kipnis both going deep against Philip Umber. Last time it happened, we told you it was in 07. Chris Magruder and Omar Vizquel did it in 02, and then Veda Pinson and Greg Nettles predating your career with the tribe. Yes, indeed. 71. Kipnis takes a strike. As I said, that'll that'll leave a wake up call for the starting pitcher when the first two guys hit it out of the ballpark. Yeah, you either normally you either see a starting pitcher do, doesn't survive because maybe he just doesn't have it, and that's a precursor of things to come, or as you say, he's settling all of a sudden in. It's like, whoa, I better get <laughs> I better right. get going here. Holy smokes, maybe I didn't warm up long <laughs> enough. They get you to thinking. Two and two. Now he's starting to get into his groove. You can tell that rhythm. He's, his pitches are they have very good movement on him. He takes a fastball for strike three call to end the inning. So Philip Umber has retired nine in a row after giving up the back-to-back -back jacks to start the game.
A.J. Przinski, Alex Rios, and Adam Dunn do up for Chicago. Jamar Gomez retired the first seven to start the game. He's allowed just one hit. He has walked one, struck out one through the first three innings. Pierzynski grounded to second base his first time up. Looks at a ball down low. Hot smash to second. Kipna stays right with it and throws him out. Well, you take your life in your own hands getting that in front of those. Well, well, that's why I turned into an outfielder. <laughs> you see him coming like that, you go the other way. He got leather on it, and he just flipped it out in front of him. Nicely done. You're not sure where that ball is going to hop or how high it does, but he handles it beautifully. Retires Brzezinski for out number one. Nice play by Jason Kipnis to start the fourth. Now Alex Rios, who popped up on the infield his first time up. Gets ahead with a fastball strike. Some birthday wishes tonight. Going out long distance uh, here tonight. Mark Huff celebrating his 31st birthday and watches us in Springfield, Oregon. Wow. That is a ways away. You can't get much farther away, can no, you? No, <laughs> At least within the continental U.S. We've had messages before from folks overseas in different time zones and Pitch outside, didn't go. One and two the count. I think we figured out one time the guy was watching it was already tomorrow where yeah. he was. Well, anybody that's watching you is from tomorrow. That's a good 0-2 pitch right there <laughs> just off the dish. Now what is that supposed to <laughs> I'm mean? <just> kidding. <laughs> Swung Ooh. on and miss. He got him. <laughs> Second strikeout for Gomez. And there are two down here in the fourth. I don't know. I just had to say it. He comes right back with another slider. This one looked like it had a little more tilt to it. He took a little something off it, more break to it, and he was able to get Rios to chase. Good pitch. Adam Dunn struck out his first time up, looks at a ball down low. Also, Dan Watson celebrating his 47th birthday right here at Progressive Field tonight from Van Lue, Ohio. Up high, 2 0. Oh. Autumn Glacier celebrating her 16th birthday. Joseph Fajak in Youngstown is 78. His son, Ralph, is 50 in Boardman. Dunn hammers that to right center. Fukudome on the run, dies, makes the catch. Oh, an outstanding play by Kosuke Fukudome. He takes a hit, if not extra bags, away from Adam Dunn to end the fourth inning.
here in the bottom of the fourth inning and after a terrific defensive effort by Kosuke Fukudome as Dribble Cabrera Travis Hafner and Carlos Santana do up here Cabrera grounded to second base his first time up pitch caught the outside corner Well, it's good to see that uh, as Dribble's back in the lineup the other day in that doubleheader late in the game, we figured out oh, not not this guy again because you want to see him finish the year on a, on a high note because it has been a career year for him. It was a good sign after the ball game when Cabrera said he, it felt more like a cramping than a muscle pull. And he said it was already starting to feel better after the ball game. Probably more than anything, it just scared him. Well, the way things have gone this year, you don't believe anything you hear when it comes to an injury because you just expect the worst. <laughs> That's just the way it has gone, but it's nice to see him back in there. Now the 2-2. Slow chopper hit towards second base. Beckham flips it to first. One away. Sunday strategy presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care returns tonight at 11:30. Andre Knott, Doug Deacon, and Tony Grossi will get you ready for the Browns' home game against the Miami Dolphins. It's Sunday strategy tonight at 11:30 right here on STO. In the dirt, ball one to Pronk. See if Pronk can take care of business here and get his 1,000th career yeah, hit. He's sitting on 999. Yeah, yeah, get it because he hit a ball right on the nose his last at bat. Big bouncer to second. Beckham throws him out two away. Well, tomorrow night, a very special occasion here at Progressive Field as the Indians will pay tribute to Jim Tomey and his 600 career home runs. It'll be a great pregame ceremony before the ball game. There are limited tickets still available, but not many. So if you'd like to come down and be part of the festivities, log on to Indians.com and get your tickets now because it is a very high probability it will be sold out by game time tomorrow night. If you can't be here, just keep it tuned right here to Sports Time Ohio. We will have the pregame ceremony. We'll have it all for you live right here. Mike Hargrove will be on hand, along with Sandy Alomar Jr., obviously. Carlos Baerga will be here. Paul Sorrento, Chad Oje, some of his former teammates will be in town. And all fans in attendance will receive a commemorative poster. Santana bounces to first. The Indians go one, two, three. Two nothing Cleveland through four.
Panini's. Like Panini's Franchise Group on Facebook for your chance to win giveaways and prizes. They're back here at Progressive Field going to the fifth inning. The Indians powered by back-to-back -back homers to start the game from Kosuke Fukudome and Jason Kipnis. Have a two to nothing lead. Jenmar Gomez spinning a one hitter through four. He has retired the last four Sox hitters in a row. Set down the first seven consecutively to start the game. Diane Viciato will lead off. Grounded to third his first time up. A little slow roller that Jack Hannahan made a great grab and throw on. The 0 1 chopped to third again. Hanahan, a little easier play this time. He'll throw him out, and that's out number one. Rick got an interesting message here from Facebook fan Scott Rowe, who was asking about Jason Kipnis, and he said, Will he qualify still for Rookie of the Year next season? All right, I looked it up. He's at 109 at bats coming into tonight. 130. 130 yeah. is the cutoff. I'm guessing he's not going to play or, every day the final seven games after this. I don't know. Um, it's worth, I think, 50 games or a, a number of games as well as amount of at-bats. It's games or at-bats, so we'll see. Yeah, he has 109, is... so he's 20-some away. Um, I mean, they haven't been playing him every day since he's come back anyway. So... Who, uh, who knows? We'll, we'll wait and see. We've got, what, four, seven to go. Doubleheader Saturday. In there for a strike. Alejandro Diaz. Fly to center his first time up. Yeah, the other part of that equation that you were asking about, Rick, is if you accumulate more than 45 days on the active roster during the 25-player limit period. So that wouldn't include, doesn't include September. That, well, that, I think he did that, didn't he? What? Does DL time yes, count I on think the active does. roster? No? Well, active roster. Came up on July 22nd. I think he'll be under the... He can be under it. We'll see. Alejandro Diaz fly to center in the third to lead off that inning. Brent Morrell waiting on deck. 3-2 pitch. And that's ball four. Second walk issued by Gomez tonight. Gomez fires and hit off the end of the bat into center field for a knock. Diaz stops at second. And the White Sox have two runners aboard with one out here in the fifth. Let's look at this pitch. Uh, usually uh, you try and get this guy away, but it was a breaking ball that he left upstairs. It was mid-thigh. Mid you get that ball down, it's a little different story, but he gave him some swinging room. He drives it right back up the middle. The second hit for the Sox, and they have first and second now with one out. And Gordon Beckham. Beckham was the guy in the third inning. He hit the ball right back up the middle. It hit Gomez's leg or his foot. Carom to Hanahan, who was able to force Morrell at second base.
Throw to second. Close play. Oh, I like that. Get in ahead of the tag. That was a nice play. Keep him that half step or a step closer and a good throw. Two on, one out, two on pitch. Beckham pops it straight up. Santana in foul territory. Two down. Yeah, he got that ball in. It's upsetting. Thought he had a pitch to, to his liking. He pops it up and you walk back. So an upsetting at bat for him, but a good out for Gomez. The pitch to Juan Pierre is a swing and a miss. Pierre a single up the middle his last time up. Just two hits allowed by Gomez, and both of them had been singles to center field. Just missed with that one. He wanted it, but it's one and one now. Well, Tampa Bay putting a hurting on the Yankees tonight. They raise lead New York seven to nothing in the third. See that little comeback fastball that he was looking oh. for the inside corner. That's a, that's a good two strike pitch. See why he wanted it now. It looked pretty good. Now Tampa Bay in that wild card race, desperate for a win tonight, trying to keep the heat on the Red Sox. And they're running out of time. But Boston is allowing them to stay in it, though. Yeah, they sure are. It's amazing the month of September that they have had. But like you say, games are they're coming down. We're into the single digits. Boston is at New York starting tomorrow. Tampa Bay goes home to play Toronto. Red Sox are five and sixteen, I believe, in the yeah, month of in September. In the month of September, they certainly are. Meanwhile, break up the Orioles. They're shutting out Detroit five to nothing. So far tonight. 3 1 pitch. Pierre with a line drive single in the right field. Fukudome fields it. He'll go to the short way to second. The throw to third is offline. Hanahan scrambles to pick it up. Now coming home with the tying run is Morell, and he's in there safely. Oh, boy. That just didn't look right from the no, get go. No, it did not. He fell behind and he came in with a fastball. And Pierre took advantage of it. He's a good RBI guy for, for a leadoff man with two outs. He got a pitch to his liking. He drives in the one run, but on the throw, Cabrera throws it over to Hanahan after he cut it. Morrell was going to third base, a bad throw. Morrell got back up to go home, so there may be, let me see, here's the one error right here. I think it's the Carrera barehanded, Cabrera did. And by the time Hanahan could get it and throw it home, he scores easily, so there's got to be an error, I think, on the throw right here. Cabrera trying to do a little too much. Yeah, he did. He tried to do too much because he realized Morrell, you know, wasn't really busting it around. But it ends up costing him a run, so we have a tie game. And Pierre ends up at second base on the play. So we're back to even a two-piece.
Now Alexei Ramirez with a chance to give Chicago the outright lead. And it's a strike call by Bill Welke. I think he basically indicating that Ramirez went after it. 70 pitches for Gomez. 41 have been strikes. That ends a 29 game errorless streak for as dribble Cabrera. Trying to do a little too much there in that situation. Let him give him third base. You keep that guy back at first should have been a single. Rip down the left field line. And a foul ball. Not by much. And we'll come back and do it again. The two strike pitch back out of play. Two two now here in the fifth inning. Gomez has Ramirez down on the count 0 and 2. With Juan Pierre the go ahead run at second base. Up and away. Struck him out looking. Ramirez doesn't like it. But that's the third strikeout of the night for Jenmar Gomez. White Sox tie the game at two, middle of the fifth. For the Indians, it'll be Grady Sizemore, Matt Laporta, and Jack Hanahan. Nice crowd on hand here for the series finale. 
Expecting a big house tomorrow night as the Indians pay tribute to Jim Tomey in his 600 career homers. Strike called to Sizemore, who grounded the second his first time up. Also have a day-night doubleheader on Saturday against Minnesota. Kids get in free for the 105 contest, so bring the whole gang down on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, why not? Great value there. I enjoy it. And then the final home game of the regular season on Sunday. Tribe will finish the year with three in Detroit next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I want to send along very special birthday wishes to Andy Gerhardt of Talmadge, Ohio. He is a diehard Indian fan, be turning 102 years old. How about that? Andy, happy birthday. 102, huh? That's beautiful. Seth Joe Keenan of Montville, Ohio, is turning eight. Happy birthday, Seth. And Barbara Meek in Bath, Ohio, celebrating her 49th birthday. Swing and a miss. Sizemore strikes out. That's three Ks for Philip Umber. One down here in the fifth. Our game recap brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Indians started the game with back-to-back -back blasts by Kosuke Fukudome and Jason Kipnis. And it stayed that way until the top half of this fifth inning. And the White Sox got an RBI single from Juan Pierre and then a throwing error. Allow the tying run to come home. And that's where we stand. Find out about more than 30 Toyota offers available now at buyatoyota.com. Matt Laporta grounded to third his first time up. And takes a strike. It's 0-2. Reporter has hit in four straight games, going four for his last 16 coming in. Slowly tapped to short. Alexei Ramirez waits back, unloads in a hurry to get him. Two down. Well, I told you, I sensed him getting a little rhythm and making some pitches. After the first two hitters of the game, he has not allowed a base runner. 14 in a row. Yeah, he has been, uh, he has been locked in. That wake-up call was set in early. Jack Hanahan. One ball, one strike. One ball, two strikes with two down here in the fifth. Philip Umber cruising along here. Back out of play. A little bit low, two and two. Found back. St. Louis Cardinals in the National League had their four game winning streak snap. They began the day. Just a game and a half in back of Atlanta for the wild card spot yeah, in the National League. They had a six to three lead going into the ninth. Ooh, that bullpen gave it up. Those are the ones that hurt this yeah, late. Yeah, it sure does. They were playing outstanding baseball. Here's the two two to Hanahan. Full count. Only Tampa Bay is leaving no doubt tonight against the Yankees. They're up 11 to nothing.
Now the line on the payoff pitch. And it's ball four. So that snaps a string of 14 in a row retired by Umber. And the Indians have a two out base runner for Ezekiel Carrera. Carrera flied to left his first time up. Back out of play. This is actually the first time that Umber has had to go from a stretch tonight. Line to left. Pierre on the move. Can't get it. Fair ball. Into the corner. Hanahan coming around third. They're going to wave him home. Pierre still chasing the baseball. Into third is Carrera. Scoring is Hanahan. White Sox won a fan interference call. Yes, he did. Here comes Ozzie Guillen out to argue. White Sox players were all pointing down into the left field corner, but the third base umpire, Marty Foster, was right on it. I don't know what he didn't see that everybody else saw. Well, what Pierre did that I, you can't do as a fielder is give up and let up on the play. He was looking in like some fan touched it, and even if they did, you have to make sure and see the umpire call it first. But when you've got a guy on base running around, you've got to get to it as quickly as possible and throw it in. So they're good to going over it right now. We couldn't see it was out of our reach. The only other thing I was thinking they're going to talk about it was maybe was he arguing that the ball was foul? I, we, as you say, we kind of lose track of it deep into that left field corner. Well, Take one more look here. I, it might have. I, I didn't see this. It's going down the left field line. Because I saw Pierre motioning chasing. like he didn't. He said, I didn't touch it. No, well, it was clearly fair. A fair, ball. fair ball. Oh, there. He's saying oh. it, it hit up over there and a fan touched it maybe. Right there. Watch it as it comes off on one of those hands. I don't know. It's hard to tell. And now I guess oh, Ozzy yeah. got his way. Yep. Now, how can the, the, the one guy out there closest to the play not see it? Or, or, and somebody else make the make the call or change the call is what I don't understand. Yeah, the third base umpire, Marty Foster, has got the best view of anyone. He's right down there. Now, is that a, a, a ground rule double if it hits that railing fan and it goes out of play? Is it fan interference or is that oh. railing out of play? You know, in the ground rules. You see, that could be an automatic ground rule double right there when it hits the railing because it's out of play. It's above the fence, the uh, yellow line. Saying, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah. up. There it is. Double. Automatic ground rule double. That's what it is, and that's probably the call above the line. If it stays inside or below that line, in play. But that ball was clearly above the yellow line, so it's a ground rule double, and unfortunately for the Indians, no score. And that's what Pierre was saying right there when he was coming in, so he had a legitimate beef. Kosuke Fukudome. Takes a strike. Oh, and two quickly the count. That's lined in the left center of base hit. Scoring is Hanahan. Here comes Carrera. Two for the price of one. And the Indians take a 4-2 to two lead. Yeah, good thing. It doesn't matter. And how about Fukudome? On an 0-2 pitch, he's going to go the other way. And he has driven in three of the Indians' four runs. I mean, watch a, a on our Time Warner Cable pitch tracker, not a very good 0-2 pitch. That ball came right back and stayed middle of the plate. So he flares it in. 
By the time Pierre could get that ball, they say don't throw it, hold it up. Indians take a 4-2 to two lead, so they come right back and answer that two spot put on the board by the White Sox. Kipnis with a bouncing ball to second. Beckham throws him out. That'll end the inning, but the Indians storm back with a two out, two run single by Fukudome. And they're back on top, four to two. Brought to you by Miller High Life. Find out how giving back bottle caps can give returning vets a piece of the high life. Go to MillerHighLife.com for details. Four two in favor of the Indians now. Sixth inning. AJ Pierzynski, Alex Rios, and Adam Dunn due for Chicago. Brown ball to second. Kipnis feels it cleanly and throws him out. Our trivia question tonight brought to you by AT&T. Which pitcher holds the Indians record for most seasons of 20 or more wins? How about Bob Lemon? What did he do it six, seven times? Seven. Born on this day back in 1920. All right, seven times, huh? Feller, Lemon, Wynn, and Garcia, those those four put up a ton of victories in their career. Alex Rios 0 for 2 on the night. Good breaking ball in for a strike. Grounded foul. Trevor Crow will. Well, he's paying attention. He picked it cleanly. I'll let Jeff Desjardins shoot that into a crowd to a young fan. Hit the third. Fair ball. Diving stop by Hanahan. Long throw. No chance to get the speedy Rios, but a heck of an effort. At third by Hanahan. I'll tell you what, that guy's a vacuum cleaner over there. He doesn't let anything by him. This one's right over the bag. 
Right, right there at the corner, and that's about as far as you can go as a third baseman to make a play. And, I mean, that, that's still awfully close for the kind of play you have to make with Rios going down the line. It'll be an infield single. And now he'll move over to short with the Indians shifting for Adam Dunn. And Gomez with the first pitch strike. Gomez struck Dunn out in the second inning. And then Fukudome robbed him of a hit with a terrific play in right field back in the fourth. Missed it in off the plate. Two balls and a strike. Done with a high fly ball to right field. Fukudome makes the catch two down. Well, take advantage of uh, the last three days here at Progressive Field. Tommy coming ticket offer for the last four games, really, because of the day-night doubleheader. Uh, you get a reserve lower ticket plus ten dollars to spend on food and merchandise, all for twenty-five dollars. Vicieto following it back out of play. Rounded to first. Nice backhanded grab made by Matt Laporta to end the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Indians lead it four to two. Back here at Progressive Field where the Indians lead the White Sox 4 to 2. As Dribble Cabrera 0 for 2 on the night leading off. Umber misses up and away with a breaking ball.
two and one to count. Angels lead the Blue Jays two to one there in the sixth inning. Tampa Bay trouncing New York twelve to nothing there in the fourth. I read a story that Major League Baseball is a little bit nervous at the potential for a three-way tie in that wild card spot because the Angels and Rays are both two and a half games behind Boston. And if they end up with a three-way tie, it's a logistical nightmare to sort it all out. They'd have to have a couple of elimination games with the Angels potentially having to go coast to coast on back-to-back -back days. Highly unlikely given the amount of games that are left, but anything's possible. As Dribble Cabrera gets the leadoff single here for the Indians, trying to get the offense rolling again here in the sixth. Well, as Dribble hit a, a little slider middle of the plate, took advantage of a, a bad pitch. Travis Hafner fly to center in the first inning, grounded out sharply to second base in the fourth. His next pitch will be number 80 on the night for Philip Umber. And Travis Hafner takes a strike. By the way, Tommy Boschenek must be bored up there tonight. He, he quickly looked up the big four, Feller, Lemon, Wynn, and Garcia. They combined for 779 wins for the Indians. How about that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call them the big four. Hafner cuts and misses, and it's one and two. Remains a ball and two strikes. Hit toward second. Beckham to Ramirez. Um, to Viciedo, who couldn't come up with a throw. I don't know why. <laughs> he's looking at the his glove. glove. Yeah, he's looking at his glove. If he holds on, it's a double play ball. I mean, Hapner rolls over on it. Beckham gets it over to Ramirez. And here's the throw. <laughs> Handcuffed. He, he, he called for a slider and he threw him a sinker. But definitely that ball has to be caught right there. So the Indians get an extra out is what happens. So let's see if they can take advantage of it. Carlos Santana 0 for 2 is the batter. Right up the middle, it's through a base hit. Hafner will stop at second. Second hit in the inning for the Indians. Sixth hit in the game. They had two hits in the first, two in the fifth, and now two here in the sixth. Okay, so there's uh, there's a good start to taking advantage of the extra out in the inning. Santana lines one into center field. That's hit number six now for the Indians. That'll give. Grady Sizemore an opportunity. Bullpen for the Indians working. It looks like uh, Joe Smith out there. So looks like Gomez's night would be over. So see if they can add on a few more runs for him. 
Grady with a high fly ball to right. Diazza backpedaling a few steps. He'll make the catch. Hafner will tag. He's booking it down to third. He'll go in safely, but there are two down. Our Miller taste greatness moment on this date in 1969. The Say Hey Kid. His 600th career home run. We've come a long way with this HD technology, haven't we? Do you we? think? <laughs> <laughs> First and third, two down for Matt Laporta. 0 for 2 on the night. Weakly grounded in the hole. It's going to be a base hit. And Hafner will score to make it a 5-2 Indians lead. They did take advantage of it. How about that? The mistake there, they're able to add on, and that was a beautiful seeing eye base hit by Matt Laporte. He couldn't have rolled it out there any better. Little slider off the end of the bat, and I mean, it just gets bossed to Cieto at first base, and by the time Beckham can chase it down and dive for it, there it is. It's a base hit, and it's an RBI. So they'll make it a 5-2 to two ball game. So the inability to turn that double yes. play, or more importantly, the the simple drop by Viciedo allows the Indians to add to their lead. Jack Hanahan walked and scored in the fifth. Funny how baseball can turn. Philip Umber had retired 14 Indians hitters in a row. And then with two outs in the fifth, he walked Jack Hanahan. And, and Carrera doubled. Fukudome with a two out, two run single. And the Indians. That's it. Got their down. mojo back. Yeah, sure did. 0 oh 2 on Hanahan now. Umber now 90 pitches on the night. His first career start at Progressive Field. Gave up two home runs to start. And then retired 14 in a row. The Indians got the two out two run hit from Fukudome in the fifth. And now after they botched the double play the Indians tack on another run here in inning number six. A little bit low. One ball, two strikes. Strikes him out to end the inning. But the Indians get another run. And through six, it's Cleveland five, Chicago two.
to see the Tribe at home is this weekend, Saturday. We've got a full day of baseball for you. That first doubleheader game at 1 o'clock. All kids can get in for free. There is no better deal than that. Get on out here. And then Sunday, we will wrap up the last home game of the season against the Twins. Full day. Kids fun day going on. The first 7,000 kids will receive a free drawstring backpack. And then it's also fan appreciation day. Lucky people out there will receive some autographed Tribe memorabilia. And then afterwards, Everyone can run the bases. If you don't have your tickets yet, go online right now to idioms.com and get them. Matt Rick, back up to you guys. Thanks, Katie. 5 2 Indians, seventh inning. And the tribe goes to their bullpen. It's brought to you by Verizon 4G LTE. Rule the air on the most advanced 4G network in the world. Joe Smith coming on for the 68th time this year, 185 ERA. Face the bottom third of the White Sox order. Alejandro Diaz, Brent Morrell, Gordon Beckham. Well, Gomez in line for his fifth straight win. If the bullpen can put it three more zeros on the board or somewhere close. 2-0 the count. And Joe's missed on three straight. Now that that probably is the one thing that has jumped out at me the most with Smith this year is really since day one his ability aggressive. to come in and throw strikes. Yeah, well that's what sets him up is there's no doubt about it. I mean that's something you know he was nibbling or he would you know try and be a little too fine last year. This year he's been the total opposite, but he will walk the leadoff man here on four pitches. Tony Rizzo and Frank Stams bring you the Notre Dame College High School Game of the Week. Friday, it's St. Vincent St. Mary. That's Frank's alma mater against Archbishop Hoban. Don't miss all the action Friday night at 1130 following Chuck's last call. Brent Morell has walked, singled, and scored a run. Look at, he's Joe upset Smith. now. He's upset with himself. Six straight balls. But you were right. That's that, that has set him apart this year. It is being aggressive, throwing strikes, getting ahead of the county. He has great movement. Left-handers hitting just 135 off him this year. Last year they were well over 300, you know, and they, they wouldn't even bring him in this situation. Overall, hitters are hitting 207. Righties are 242, but... You know, it gives you that different arm, arm angle and very important part of that bullpen as your bridge man. There he gets back in the strike zone. And it's two and one. A little bit high. Rafael Perez quickly gets up and starting to get loose now in the tribe pin. Goes after the 3 1 pitch and a harmless fly ball to right field for out number one. And that will bring up Gordon Beckham, who is 0 for 2 on the night. Well, we'll probably know in the next two weeks how the soap opera will play out in the Windy City with regards to the managerial status of Ozzie Guillen. But right now, Rick, every day there's a new story in the Chicago papers. And a lot of it is just, you know, the local media and the pundits weighing in on their opinion. Now, the bottom line is Ozzie has a contract for next year. Right. He wants an extension, though. And so he's been sort of lobbying through the media to get a contract extension before next season. He says he wants it, or at least he wants some clarification before he goes on his vacation, which is two days after the season ends. But well, uh, you know what? You, you, you have to play the year out. The, the reporters aren't going to let it die. They're going to continue to do it for until the season's over in another week. You know, I mean, it's just something to write about. Who better to go to than Ozzy? You know he's going to say something about something. 
They've already got a list of candidates to replace him in the papers. Well, I know. But, I mean, like you say, he has a contract for next year. So what difference does it make? Let, I mean, just go home. It'll, it'll take care of itself. He and Jerry, Jerry Reinsdorf, I'm sure, will meet before the end of the year. And uh, they'll know what's going on. It's like a soap opera sitting there trying to watch it day in and day out. Back to the mound, and Smith with a great stab and gets out of the inning. He walked the leadoff man on four straight. He comes back to get the next three hitters in a row. Time now for the Cleveland Clinic seventh inning stretch. Indians fans, time to get up, and let's move it. Orthopedic mattress made in Northeast Ohio. And by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers. It's time to join the Hyundai movement. Beautiful fall evening here in downtown Cleveland, and the Indians with a 5 2 lead over the White Sox. Philip Umber back out here for the bottom of the seventh inning, his 94th pitch of the night he is a strike to Ezekiel Carrera, who doubled and scored in the fifth. Takes another strike. It's 0 2. And he goes after the pitch. Looked like it might have been a little bit up out of the strike zone, and he's still able to slap it right up the middle. Well, 0 2 pitch, another base hit. He, he speeds up his bat by throwing him the slider. You know, little guys with short swings. Uh, watch where this location is on our. See a breaking ball up out yeah. over the plate. It might have been a little bit away, but he was able to keep his hand back and uh, just drilled it right yeah. up the middle. Eight hits now for the tribe. Top of the order, Kosuke Fukudome. He's had a big night. Two for three, a solo homer to start the game, and then a two out, two run base hit in the fifth. Tampa Bay now with a 13 to nothing lead over the Yankees. In the fifth inning in the Bronx. Tampa Bay maybe maybe they're going to try to tie the tribes mark. Was that 20s? What did we beat them? 22? 22, 23 to 22 nothing. 22 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well the most runs scored I think in the month of September. Boston had 18 and they've done it not twice. once but twice. Yeah, that's right. So they're going to try and beat Boston every other way. Maybe they'll do that too. Angels lead Toronto three to one. They're in the seventh. Remember, Tampa and the Angels tied two and a half and back of Boston for the wild card spot in the AL. Runner goes, pitch up and away. 
Not in time. Carrera in with the stolen base. His 10th. I like it. Be aggressive. Get yourself in scoring position. He does. Steals the base. Any chance? You know, 5 2 lead. Late in the ballgame, you have a chance to add on. Why not? Why not try? Carrera, that's part of his game. Well, he just watched Fukudome on four straight, and he might be out of gas. Ozzie Gian's making his way to the mound. No wave yet, but there it goes. So Philip Umber goes six innings plus two batters. His night comes to an end. We've got a timeout here at Progressive Field with the Indians on top five to two. the bottom of the seventh remember like Panini's franchise group on Facebook for your chance to win giveaways and prizes Addison Reed coming on for Chicago sixth appearance of the year he has struck out ten walked just one in six in the third innings nice ratio well he's going to have to cut through the tough part of the Indians lineup Kipnis coming up Cabrera, Hafner to follow. The Indians coming into this game with just a half a game lead over the White Sox for second place in the Central. Win tonight, push them a game and a half up. And I'll tell you what, it may not seem like much, and they may be a number of games behind first place, but second place is second place where they started last year, where they finished. Major improvement and certainly something to build on. I liked what Mike Hargrove said about the difference in the perspectives between the White Sox and the Indians on finishing second place. You know, and a lot of it has to do with perspective, where you're at as an organization, as a team. The White Sox thought they had a team that could contend and win the whole thing. While the Indians might have had high internal expectations, most people thought this was a club that would be fighting right. to stay Get out the of the 500. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, no, I mean, should this come true and they, they go ahead and they, they get to second place and they finish, then, then you go to the next step of expectations. And, you know, you have players believing and things like that, so expectations will be yeah. different. And, and, you know, Mike pointed out back in the – you know, early 90s, that's what he was doing with that club, challenging them to finish high and then, hey, we, we've done this. Let's go, let's move up. Now the 1-1. One, one. That pitch missed down and in. But we have also seen with Indians teams, and especially teams that are stocked with a lot of young players, as the expectations rise... 
you know, things can be a little bit more difficult, too. Yeah, they have a lot of decisions to make before next year. Swung on a miss, two and two. I mean, with the young players, with some contract issues on who they can keep, and there's options for a couple of guys and some arbitration-eligible players, a lot of them, eight, I think eight of them, eight or nine. You know, not that saying that they're going to go to arbitration with everyone because they haven't been to arbitration since, what, 91, is it? Been a long time, I know. Full count. But, I mean, just a lot of decisions that are going to have to be made. I remember talking to John Hart way back in 1992 saying that they wanted to eliminate the arbitration process because it was, it didn't do anything but create bad feelings. And so you try to avoid it at all costs. But back then it was offering young players longer-term contracts. Kipnis with a pop to left. Pierre is there to make the catch, and that's out number one. And back then that was sort of a, a new trend. You know, it was. It set the, the trend for for players coming up young players young players like Carlos Baerga, Charlie Nagy guys who hadn't quite established themselves at that point yet to an organizational friendly contract yeah, well certainly giving them some money but securing them and guaranteeing something that you know they haven't proven themselves yet you're not going year to year so there's a risk at both for both mm -hmm. sides no question the biggest uh, decisions the Indians have to make initially will be Brady Sizemore, Fausto Carmona. They hold options for both of those players for next year. Cabrera golfs one deep right field. Diazza running back, looking up. Goal! As Drupal Cabrera with a three run bomb to right. And the Indians now lead it 8 to 2. Yeah, well, there you go. That might have put the nail in it right there. A big swing of the bat, and he went down and hit it a ton. So there's the single-season record for shortstops. As Dribble Cabrera, congratulations. Boom, look at that, middle of the plate, but it was down below the knees. And he golfs it into right center field. The Indians' third homer of the day and a three-run shot and a new Indians record. As Dribble already set the record for most home runs by a Venezuelan shortstop. That obviously meant a lot to him and his heritage. And now, as Rick just mentioned, the Indians' single-season record for homers by a shortstop. Quite a year. It's been a special, special year for the Indians' MVP. Big hub from Jim Tomey. He knows what it means to hit those milestone homers. Yeah. He's hit enough of them. Travis Hafner looks at a strike. See, we get another milestone right here. Hafner sitting on 999. Why not? Hits. Get it out of the way. Reed delivers. Hafner it drives it into right center field. It's extra bases for Prong. He's on his way to second base with a double for his 1,000th career hit. All right. Another one. Back to back. Good for him. 1,000. Congratulations, Travis Hafner. Take that baseball, roll it into the dugout, and put it in his locker. Well, right now the pitcher has it. But everybody in that Indians dugout's telling this kid, throw it out of play. It goes back over to Morrell. He will send it in, and out comes Hafner because Cord Phelps is coming to pinch run. So there you go, 1,000 knocks. Way to go, Pronk. Special moment here in the seventh inning as Dribble Cabrera sets the franchise mark for homers by a shortstop. And the next man up, Travis Hafner, picks up his 1,000th career hit. And Addison Reed has had a tough go of it since he came on here, giving up the blast to Cabrera. Now the double to Hafner. 
And now Carlos Santana had a good rip and fouled straight back. Well, yeah, picked on a little slider. And hit it into right center field. Good swing, a double. There you go, a little tip of the cap. Santana one for three on the night. Way outside. One ball, two strikes. And he strikes him out. Two down. The STO Celebrity Par 3 shootout returns Sunday night at 10. This week, Austin Carr, Ron Harper, Bruce Drennan, and Tony Grossi battle it out at Stonewater Golf Club. The STO Par 3 shootout Sunday night at 10 following the Golf Zone with Jimmy Hanlon right here on STO. Brady with a line drive, base hit into right field. Cord Phelps coming around third. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time. Brady Sizemore with a two out RBI single, and it's 9 2 Indians. Got a fastball down and in. You see how Przinski had to reach back over that plate, try to backhand it. He wants it down and away. He gets it down and in. Well, Grady will drive in a run. Phelps comes in to score. It's a four-run seventh inning for the Indians. And the eighth man to bat in the inning is Matt Laporta. Had a two-out RBI single his last time up. Indians on the night have gone three for four with a runner in scoring position and two outs. That's that's uh, going to win you a lot of games. Problem is, tough to make a living swinging the bats that hot. Way outside of all in two strikes. Laporta strikes out to end the inning. And we'll go to the eighth with the tribe in command thanks to his dribble Cabreras. Three run bomb here in the seventh.
<laughs> Nine two in favor of the tribe. And here now in the eighth inning. Zach Putnam will get a chance to pitch. Fifth time this year. No wins. A loss. The ERA of 10. Point eight zero. He had a little rough go of it the other night. So he will face Alexi Ramirez, A.J. Przinski, and Alex Rios. I'm going to get a pinch hitter here. This is going to be Eduardo Escobar. We haven't seen him yet. This guy's so new that in their own press notes they list him as a right-handed hitter. He's actually a switch hitter. <laughs> <laughs> they're not we even sure have about a talk him yet. with him. <laughs> We'd talk to him if they were going to play here tomorrow, but they're moving on, so we'll have to mention it next well, year. It's been a long year for Bobby Bechtel too. He does a great job with the White Sox and their public relations. Fouled out of play. Escobar came into this year, according to Baseball America, as the best defensive infielder in the White Sox system. Little tapper towards second. He gets down the line in a hurry. Hell, one down here in the eighth inning and kind of a, a melancholy evening here in the booth. Because, it really uh, is. I mean, I've started to come to you're, tears. You're cheering up a little I, bit, aren't I you? I am. I am. Well, this is the last night we'll have with Tom Boschenek, our our heralded, much uh, highly touted Teflon Tom. <laughs> I love that. They've got Teflon Tom Boschenek He's, on there. He'll be uh, moving on to uh, cover some college football this weekend, so we won't see him the rest of the He's his, sort uh, of blowing us off is yeah. what he's doing <laughs> the exactly last weekend. Right. He says he couldn't wait to the end of the year. He's had enough. He's going on to greener pastures. Well, Tommy, have a nice offseason. Don't freeze. We'll see you in spring. Teflon. Teflon Tom. That thing's stuck, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sticks to Tom. Berzinski is swinging a miss in the count one and two. Teflon's dead. Frank makes the best peppers, oh, in the, doesn't yeah. he? Best peppers in the world supplies us all summer long. Took my jar home last night. And Grover, Grover got pickles. Well, out of the deal. The old first baseman, yeah. When you can pick it, you get the pickles. <laughs> <laughs> the one-two pitch, bounce to first, backhanded by Laporta. He'll go himself. Two down. That's going to bring up Alex Rios with two away here in the eighth inning. Zach Putnam delivers outside ball one. Two balls, no strikes. Popped them straight up. As Dribble Cabrera calling for it, he's got it. And the White Sox go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Indians land a whooping on the Chicago team, nine to two.
Bottom of the eighth inning here at Progressive Field, and the Indians with a 9 2 lead. They started it with a bang, and they've picked, uh, finished it up with a bang offensively. Back to back homers to start the game, and then Cabrera with a three run smash in the seventh inning as Josh Kinney comes on now for Chicago. Jack Hanahan, Ezekiel Carrera, and Kosuke Fukudome for the Indians. Eduardo Escobar stays in the game at shortstop. Down and in for ball one. Later tonight here on Sports Time Ohio, Chuck's last call, and then Sunday strategy coming up at 11.30 p.m. Three and one to count on Jack Hanahan. And Jack draws a leadoff walk here in the eighth. Second walk tonight for Hanahan. Our Hyundai in game box score brought to you by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers. Introducing the Hyundai Assurance trade in value guarantee. Fukudome and Kipnis started the game with back to back homers. And then Fukudome had a big two out, two run single in the fifth to restore the Indians' lead. Travis Hafner's 1,000th hit. A double coming after the Cabrera three run homer. And that homer by Cabrera gave him the Indians single season record yeah. for homers by shortstop. Yes, it so did. Milestone night. And most important of all, a convincing performance to this point by the Indians in their final meeting with Chicago on the year. Yeah. Well, it, 11 and 6 or I should say 6 and 11 against the Sox this year coming into this ball game Gomez going for his fifth straight win he looks like he's in pretty good shape to get it AJ Pierzynski is going to go have a little chat with Josh Kinney the veteran catcher is probably going to tell him two things throw strikes well that's all you can tell him in a game like this look they're bringing you to the bullpen just let's go you don't come in here and start walking hitters it's been a long enough night as it was. The Indians with 11 hits out there. It's the one thing uh, Umber did walk to. Reed didn't walk anybody, but Kenny walks the first hitter he faces. And remember, Philip Umber at one point had retired 14, 14. Indians hitters yeah. in a row. Three and one. He's walked the first two here to start the bottom of the eighth inning. And Don Cooper is going to make a little trip to the mound now. The last thing he wants to do is have to go to the mound in a 9 2 game. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> that was like about 10 feet before he even got there. Are you all right? <laughs> Don Cooper's basically saying, This is a nice visit. If Ozzie has to come out here, it's not going to be as nice. And the White Sox get their bullpen busy. The 
Ozzy's messing around with kids in the suite is what he's doing. He's messing around with the little kids sitting next to him. I'll tell you what, he's a ball. Look at him. He's messing with those. Think about what those kids are going to go home and say, I love that manager for the White Sox. He paid attention to me. People that sit in that particular dugout suite always comment about Gian after they've had experiences down there because he'll, he'll flip kids the baseballs. Oh, yeah. he'll sign He's got, I guarantee that kid right there has got probably two baseballs and God knows what else over there. Josh Kinney's thrown 12 pitches and only two strikes. And Fukudome on a 2-0 pitch fouls it away. Well, when you're a hitter up there and he's he's in a funk like this, you figure, well, he's got to throw one of them. You know, just try and throw it down the middle and throw it for a strike. So, And he did right there to Fukudome. He just fouled it off. Sooner or later, you just got to say, hey, here it is, right down the middle. Somebody hit it. Good slider. That was very good. Tight. Yeah, that's one you don't want to swing at there. Two on, nobody out. And the 2 2. And he strikes him out. So he walks the first two, fell behind Fukudome 2 and 0, and comes back to get him. Jason Kipnis, one for four on the night. With a home run back in the first. Takes a strike. It's 0-1. Down low, a ball and a strike for Kipnis. The pitch. A foul tip. Hanahan Carrera are the runners. Kenny with a one two. And he Ouch. hit him. Ouch. Now the bases are loaded. That took the back foot slider to extremes. It looked like it got him in the back foot. I mean that he's, he has had a good slider. Look at this. Right there in the back foot. Right on top of it. So the bases will be loaded by two walks and a hit batter by Kenny. Now that is not good, but now that brings up Cabrera and an opportunity to add to a 9 to 2 lead. Now they're loaded up for us dribble Cabrera. We had a three run bomb his last time up. And a one hop smash in the center field. Hanahan scores. Here comes Carrera. And it's now an 11 2 Indians lead. Cabrera now with five RBIs in his last two at bats. Well, Kenny did this to himself. Allowing those runners on base by no hit. So they have one hit in the inning and two runs in. And still runners at first and third and one out. 
And again, as Dribble gets that slider, was out over the play. It looked like it backed up a little bit, but hits it past Beckham at second base into the outfield. Rios will pick it up. 12 hits for the Indians, 11 runs, and they may not be done. Right up the middle and hit him. And then Beckham with a heads-up play to tag the bag and throw to first to complete the double play. That ends the eighth. Indians now up Out the whooping stick tonight. 11 runs on a dozen hits for the Indians. They're up nine as we go to the ninth inning. And Corey Kluber making his second appearance as an Indian. He'll be facing Adam Dunn, Diane Viciedo, and Alejandro Diaz here in the ninth for Chicago. Trevor Crow is now in the ballgame in left field. And Ezekiel Carrera goes into center for Grady Sizemore. Right back here tomorrow night. Indians and the Minnesota Twins open a series. More importantly, tomorrow night before the ball game, the Indians will pay tribute to Jim Tomey and his 600 career home runs. Great pregame ceremony, and you won't miss any of it. Tune in to Sports Time Ohio. We'll have the ceremony beginning at 7.05. Tomorrow night's game will start following the ceremony, but we'll carry it all live for you right here. There are, at least at the start of the game, there were still some limited tickets remaining for tomorrow night's game. So if you're thinking about trying to get down there to be part of the celebration, log on to Indians.com, see what's left. Otherwise, lock it in right here. It's going to be a fun night. Mike Hargrove will be here. In addition to Sandy Alomar Jr., Carlos Baerga will be in town. Paul Sorrento. Be a nice, uh, nice evening. And all fans in attendance will receive a commemorative Jim Tomey poster. Adam Dunn, 0 for 3 on the night. And Kluber throws it by him for strike one. Up and away. Corey Kluber came to the Indians from the Padres. He was part of the Jake Westbrook trade. That turned into a three-way deal last year between the Indians, the Padres, and the St. Louis Cardinals. He was a former fourth-round pick of San Diego back in 07. 
One two pitch. Breaking ball fouled away. Stick around after the ball game if you missed any of the offensive fireworks tonight. We'll review it all on the Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care Post Game Show. Conrad's home of the lowest everyday tire price guarantee. Also, we will chat with one of the stars of the game. It's all straight ahead. Bounce to first. Laporta, one away. Vesiedo 0 for 3. Paul Conurco missing his second straight game. Bothered by a stiff back, bad back. No, well, that can happen in September at times too. <laughs> Late in the year. Yeah. He's played every day, you know. They got to get a look at some of their younger kids. He has his 30 and 100. He's been uh, just another good year for Canarco, huh? Been the face of this franchise now for yeah. about the last 10 years or so, it seems. Well, anyway. got his 2,000th hit this year, and he's only five homers away from 400. So he will definitely get that next year. Oh, and to the count on Viciedo. Kluber's thrown nine pitches, eight strikes. He's gone right at him here in this ninth inning. Just outside. Diaza is next. Way outside. Omar Vizquel hoping to play another season next year. Where that will be. We'll have to wait for the offseason to find out, but he feels like he's still got more in the tank and wants to come back and play another season. Well, I mean, for that role, he's, he's perfect for it. He can play any infield position for you. And he still he loves the game, so if you're still enjoying it, why not? That old saying they say make them tear the uniform off if you can still yeah. play and you're still good enough to do it. Why not is right. The three two. And Kluber walks him. Diaz, a couple of walks and a run scored tonight. And it's outside. Ball one. Up too high, two balls, no strikes. Kluber was throwing a lot of strikes. Eight out of his first nine. Since then, though, he's had trouble finding the zone, and now he's 3-0 to Diazza. And 
And on the 3-0 pitch, bullseye. Baltimore leading Detroit 6 to 5 there in the ninth at Comerica Park. Angels Blue Jays tied at 3 there in the ninth. Tampa Bay still trouncing New York 13 to 2 in the seventh in the Bronx. Another walk back to back free passes issued by Kluber. Two on and one out. And that's going to bring up Brent Morell who is one for two. Santana out to talk with Kluber. You're right. I mean, he was all over pounding what, eight out of nine yeah. first pitch strikes. I mean, strikes on his first nine pitches. Then all of a sudden, whatever happened, plate started bouncing around a little bit. It's gone the exact opposite since. Here's the set. And a swing and a miss by Morell. Isn't it funny how it goes though? You know those hitters. They go up there thinking he was going to give in to that fastball. He throws him the slider. He swung at it after he was struggling to throw strikes. Just missed with that slider. That's a called strike Santana kind of boxed it out but it's a one and two count. Swung on and missed he struck him out he got him to chase one. And there are two down in the ninth. There you see, good breaking ball, straight down, out of the zone, gets him to swing and miss. Gordon Beckham, 0 for 3 on the night. Crowd coming to its feet. Just a little over 20,000 here tonight. Some of them have already headed for the exits with the Indians having this game well in hand. But it's been a good final meeting of the year between these two teams as far as the Indians are concerned. And the 0 1 pitch popped in the air. Kipton is calling for it. And the Indians win it. <laughs> 11 to 2 is the final score as the tribe gets back to within a game of 500 at 77 and 78. Loss drops the White Sox to 76 and 80. And the Indians now with a game and a half lead over Chicago for second place in the Central Division. Winning pitcher Jenmar Gomez. He's won five straight now and he's 5 and 2. Loser Philip Umber. He drops to 9 and 9 on the year. Time now for our play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. Thanks for making Key Bank the number one bank in Northeast Ohio. Well, we're going to go late in the ballgame, seventh inning, as Dribble Cabrera comes up, two men aboard and did some damage, a couple of walks, and he goes down and he's going to set the new record. Now for shortstops for As Dribble Cabrera. Congratulations, to him. That was a big three run home run, big impact, and a lot of smiles going around. He realizes it, and uh, really a, a good night. For a guy that's had a very, very good year. That'll be our key bank, key play of the game. So the Indians with a convincing.